Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching this video series from It's Me Again, Peter. Today, we are going to create a distribution group and add a recipient to it in Microsoft Exchange Server 2019. Once you have access to your dashboard, you want to go to Recipients, Groups, click on the plus icon and you see three different kind of group. The first one is the one we are going to be looking into today, which is the distribution group. Once you have this, you want to fill up the information. And somebody is asking me, why do we need distribution groups? Well, if you have a group of people, like, for example, I'm going to put it like uh, in a school, you have different departments, so math, science, uh, geography, biology, and you have uh, teachers right there. Let's say you have uh, five to ten teachers in different group. If you want to send an email, maybe as an IT admin, to those users, you don't want to be sending email and every time you go to the to the email, you want to type their name one by one. You don't want to be doing that. So you don't want to send an email to a distribution group so that once you send that email, everybody will receive it. That's the why we are doing this. So let's go ahead and create the uh, math department distribution group. I'm going to give it like an alias. What happened? It's contain what? Okay. Let's do English. Okay, let's do English. All right, so this DJ is for English teachers. <laughs> now we screw down a little bit. Automatically, you as an admin is going to be the owner. If you really want somebody else to be the owner, you can go ahead and select the user and that's it. Now, we wanted to have the members that is going to be part of this distribution group. Like I mentioned earlier, those members, whenever you send an email to this distribution group, they will always receive it. So for this demonstration, I'm going to include James and Jane. Now, if you screw down a little bit, you want to decide if this group is open for everybody to join or you want it to be a close membership so that they will request a permission in order to join it. The same thing, if you want to choose if they are free to leave <laughs> or they are not free to leave. So in our demonstration, I'm just going to leave it open, open. I'm going to save. So now let's test that email to make sure that it works. I'm going to copy this email. And now that I knew that Jane and James is part of that distribution group, if I don't remember, I can go back to the groups membership and i go click on it and I go to membership and i can see who is part of the group so i know james and jane is part of them so john is not part of the group but i wanted to go ahead and log into john's email and send email to that distribution group so let's see what happened i can go over here create a new email and i say just I, I don't even need to know the the full email address unless it's been hidden from the user. So I search for it and there we go. I'm going to say first distribution group email. And I'm going to say hi everyone. Send. Now we wanted to verify if that is working or not. If Jane actually received that email, we are going to log into Jane email. Oh, come on, Peter. Let me type my password again. All right, you'll see that 
John Smith actually sent an email to the English department. The reason why Jane received that email, because Jane is part of the member of that group. And that is everything that we need to know right here. If you want to learn more about distribution group, I will put a link down into this video, a link to the Microsoft documentation. You might be able to learn something about how to do this also with PowerShell. If this video is actually informative for you, please kindly share, like, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.